when you're practicing right and you're practicing full speed, it shows you who you really are. And that's the next step. Finding out who you really are. And you just push yourself to extremes. You take your intentional practice. And you say, okay, time to be the best fucking three-point shooter this planet has ever seen, man. Start curry. And step aside and take a seat. It's my turn. Best three-point shooter on the planet over here. Let's do this. Okay, I figured it out. This is how I want to shoot. I'm going to take the ball. I'm going to put it in my hands. I'm going to fucking stroke it. I figured that out. This is how my feet are going to be. This is the way that my body is going to turn. This is how I am going to do it. Best three-point shot on the planet. We figured it out. This is what it looks like. Now this is how I practice it. Speed. You've got that aspect of it. How do you begin to replicate the authenticity of genuine game speed? Because it's not just when I say game speed, it's not just the exact pace of the game, and it's not any faster or slower because the speed of every game, every individual game, and every different type of game, it's always going to be different. It depends on who you're playing with. It depends on, you know, the setup that you all are going in with. It depends on your intentions of how you intend to play the game. How do you replicate game speed? There is an absolute authenticity to genuine game speed that is simply going to require the game itself to appear. You can emulate it, but in certain ways, in certain aspects, as is the true spirit of competition, you don't technically understand their full game plan just as you wouldn't expect them to understand your full game plan because ideally it is something that you all haven't shown each other or there's wrinkles, adjustments, there's always something new, there's always something new to be shown, so you're also not assuming. You have a pretty good idea of what they're showing you a lot of the times by what they have assembled would like to think that you understand what they're going for by the composition of their team, their team members, the way that they like to play historically, whatever combination of variables you have access to. But you don't want to overly assume anything, just in general, but also to do with the game and to prevent you falling from your own pitfalls for no reason. Let them show you. But, in a sense, even if you play that team again, it's still going to be different from the first time you played them. So, pretty much, unless it's just two people that are just absolutely not trying, or they're not playing a game worth playing, unfortunately, no matter what, Every game is going to be different. You can try and try and try with all your might to create the conditions to emulate who you will be playing against. But that avenue, in a lot of senses, is going to come up short for you. If you try to overutilize it, I'll say. There's obviously a ton to glean from, you know, any kind of game plan. But like I already said before, with the game plans, you got to be ready for the bend. You can't allow it to just break. You got to be ready to shift. You got to be ready 
for them to show you something different. So you never just assume you might send out your base package, your base defense, whatever that is. But in saying that, that's what I'm actually looking for is the most you're going to get out of practice is still, 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 still what you do and how you operate. So I still want to see you do everything with that in mind, with the thought process of, okay, so how do I respond? when something like that happens. It's always with that in mind over most everything else because that's what you are affording yourself with all of this practice. That's what you are actually gaining is your ability to respond in more, in the most best ways. It's just adding up, once again, adding up all the small little details, adding up all of these small little advantages that build themselves into a game plan that plays off of your advantages and counters their advantages, attacks their disadvantages, and protects your disadvantages. Stuff of that Not just level of importance, but like you are building up and training your reaction to adversity. That's what you're practicing. So the adversity is you put it up. Oh, fuck. I just missed. Well, that fucking sucked. I don't want to do that again. That's adverse. I don't like that. I do not appreciate that adversity. I would have liked to have had those two or three or more points. So I want to make sure that that doesn't happen again. So I'm going to make sure that I make this next one. And then you get the ball and you fucking shoot it. No, big surprise. Fuck. I missed really badly that time. All right, that didn't fucking go well. Do I want the ball again? Yeah, because it's coming back around. The ball is coming back around. So what are you going to do with it? Shit, I just missed two shots. Well, now we're in a position where we just so happen to be able to think back to a time where I'm going to go ahead and assume this for you, that if you have ever touched a basketball before, there is a very, very good chance I'm almost to a degree of certainty here that you've probably missed a basketball shot I know that's fucking really digging up all of the skeletons out of your closet now huh you missed that basketball shot that one time and not only that but I'm gonna go as far as to say is you probably even missed two shots in a row before you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> oh my god. And just imagine my surprise when you've probably missed three in a row. God forbid I know, but there are some people out there, believe it or not, that have missed three basketball shots in a row. And as disgusting as that is, that's something that we're all going to have to tolerate. You know, you think you know someone... And then you think about stuff like that, and it just makes you fucking sick. But believe it or not, those people that have missed three basketball shots in a row, there are people that have done that in real games. Ugh. Ugh. I know, right? Not me. Not me. Not ever. I've never missed a basketball shot. In case you were wondering, I've never missed a shot in my life. So I would definitely not know what that feels like. So it's like, can't even imagine what kind of person it would be that would uh do that. So it's just like, as unimaginable as that is, it does happen. And now, for the uh, full circle, 
Should you be surprised when that happens? You can go with no. A lot of the time I've seen that surprise turn into immediately. And sometimes they just skip the surprise stage. I don't know why they're surprised. It's not like they're a great shot anyways. They just go straight to anger. Understandable, but also... I don't want to understand that, but I do. I mean, I not that I don't want to understand it, but like I don't want to. That's not what I want to see from people that I'm rooting for is just like automatic disappointment. Like you're not going to. OK, you're not going to make every shot. OK. Sometimes you're going to miss two in a row. OK, sometimes you're going to miss three in a row. OK. But what did we learn about patterns? Remember, sometimes. Eight in a row happens. The true randomness of random, eight in a row, is just as likely as not seeing it ten times in a row. Is just as likely as it happening a hundred times in a row. If you take enough shots, if you take a million shots, somewhere in there, somewhere in there, there's a really good random chance that you're going to hit a hundred shots in a row. That could be, random is as random does, the first 100 shots that you take. If you have 7 billion people take a million basketball shots in a row, some of them are going to hit 100 in a row. And some of those people maybe haven't ever taken a shot in their entire life. They don't even know what a basketball is. They wouldn't know what to do with it if you handed it to them and said, I need you to get me a point. They was, what the fuck? What is this? Why does it feel this way? <laughs> what did you just want? To, what? <laughs> and one of those people is going to make a hundred shots in a row at some point. That's random. That is random. That is truly random. Random is random is random. Think of something that could happen an insane amount of times. It could happen in some shape or form randomness is as random does so now we need way more data to make sure that we know what we're looking at but when we're really focused on the right stuff three in a row doesn't bother us it happens two in a row sure i've missed a shot before i've missed like 10 shots before in a row easily 10 that's generous why don't we fucking keep going down? You, I can't even remember how many shots in a row I have missed. It fucking happens all the time. Who is keeping up with that? Sounds like I sounds like the most unfun mental illness around is only being able to remember all of the times you fucked up a lot in a row, and that's all you can keep track of. That sounds fucking awful. Why would you do that to yourself? It sounds terrible. Yeah, you're gonna miss shots. Just like fucking MJ, just like LeBron, just like Kobe, just like fucking Bill Russell, just like Larry Bird. I'm going to start naming Celtics now. Just like fucking all of them. Just like McHale. <laughs> they all missed shots. They have to. You have to miss a bunch of shots. What that should do for you is only steal your resolve. Say, I miss those. That's fine. You, if, if that's the way that you pick and choose to lie to yourself is then I'm due. I'm fine with that gambler's fallacy aspect. If it's for a good reason to motivate yourself the right way, I like that. I like that part of it. But if it's just I'm due just because I've missed a bunch. No. Well, I have missed and therefore I shall eventually make. No. That's not, that is not how this works. That's the fallacy part of that. But the fucking next one's the next one's going down. Short memory, like they talk about for cover corners and safeties and stuff. Short memory. That play already happened. We are where we are right now. Practice that mentality. You're going to miss in practice. Okay. So now I missed. What did I do wrong? What did I feel that went wrong in my form? How can I adjust, not over adjust, but how can I accommodate the adjustments 
without wholesale because you don't need wholesale change. You don't need to work your way all the way into this feeling. It needs to still be boom, boom, not all the way around. Keep it tight and in time. The feeling of the timing and the tightness of boom, 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 boom at the right intervals, the right timing, the comfortability of feeling the right way. What do you feel that's out of time? What do you feel that's overly compensating and not exaggerating into that feeling, but making sure that that feeling is there? And you might have to slow down just a little bit, but then you bring it back up and then you bring it back into speed again and you get back into rhythm, but you hit that timing whatever that point is that you're focusing on and be intentional about it. Recognize why you're missing. Consider that. Don't just I fucking miss like 10 times in a row, man. It's like, I can't even fucking do anything anymore. Like you do that in practice. You're going to do that in game. And now if you fucking do that in game, Oh my God. Oh, holy fucking shit. I better not see you do that. You fucking grab some fucking bench, bro. You're not touching that ball for I don't even know how long. We're going for fucking... We're fucking starting from scratch. If I see you doing that shit in game... Bud. Come take a seat. Come take a seat, bud. Into that bench, it's real fucking cold, Holmes. I'm gonna need you to do something about that because your mindset in game is what you practice. If you're not practicing a strong foundational consistency, just this fucking concrete right there. Yeah, I missed. Give me the fucking ball again, right here. Give it to me. I'm making the next one. I am making the next shot. I don't care when it is. I don't care if it's for all the marbles or it's a fucking layup off a fast break. The next one's going through the fucking hoop. I missed that one. Happens. Happens. But the next one. Going through. And then once that one goes through, you're fucking goddamn right it is. And you know what? So is the next one believe believe prove to yourself in practice why you deserve to believe in yourself because you know the feeling you know the repetition you put the work in have you put the work in there's no line about that and it's going to show up in game you put the work in you're going to see it if you don't you're not don't lie to yourself about that either if you haven't been putting the work in Fucking, I better not hear you telling other people that you have, especially not yourself, because you're telling other people you already told yourself that. Or you have accepted that you are lying. And that, nope, that does not happen anymore. That does not happen anymore. It's a fucking such a waste of time. It's so unnecessary. It can't happen. You can't do it to yourself. Plenty of things to hold you back. Don't do it to yourself. You are holding yourself back when you are lying to anyone, especially yourself. Let's go back over that real quick in case you haven't heard me say that. If you haven't heard me say that before, you have not watched a single one of these other videos, and I'd appreciate it if you did. For all of our sakes, you're lying to yourself still. That ain't it. <laughs>